Okay, this is section 3.5. We're going to be dealing with linear models. A linear model is just basically a real world, world scenario that models a linear function. Okay, so we're going to be able to um, take some data and then uh, convert that into a linear equation. So some guidelines here to start. Make sure you read the problem carefully. It kind of goes without saying. You want to make sure you understand what the problem's asking and then um, pull the important pieces from the problem. You're going to be determining your independent and dependent variables. Um, this is a pretty tough skill, I think, for a lot of students. Um, and you're going to get better at it as you practice it more, but you have to really pay attention to the, the phrasing and the terminology that are used so that you can figure out which variable depends on the other. Okay, So our independent variable, that's x. Our dependent variable is y. Now, once you figure out that, the rest of it's kind of a piece of cake, because all you're going to be doing after that is running a linear function. And you've been doing this the past few days. You've done it in geometry. You've done it in algebra. All you're going to do is take your data, an x, y pair, find a slope, plug it into point slope form, and then um, go from there. Our final you know, answer for is going to be in function form, which is called which you call slope intercept form. So something like this which we've been calling slope-intercept form, is also called function form as well. Okay, so um, you can also read that as y is a function of x. Okay, now that kind of brings me to um, our next tip here on how to determine the independent and dependent variable. So I was just saying y is a function of x, right? And we know that y is our dependent, x is our independent. So you might see this phrase explicitly written in a question. They might tell you something like, for example, distance is a function of time. Right away there, you have to, as the reader, realize that distance is your output, your dependent variable, and time is your input or your independent variable. Okay? You might also see the phrase that the output depends on the input. Obviously this is pretty straightforward. Um, they're just straight up telling you, hey, this is going to be depending on this. So price depends on the number of items sold. So price represents the dependent variable because it depends on this, the number of items sold. So that would be my input, the x. The third phrase that you would see is the output varies linearly. So they tell you right here in the problem that it's a linear equation because eventually we're going to ha um, have a phrase that says the output varies quadratically. Um, and that's obviously for a different chapter because we're going to get into quadratics then. But um, just get used to that, and that means the same thing before. Notice you're seeing the y come first in all of these phrases. So the cost varies with time, varies linearly with time, means that this is your dependent, this is your independent. Sometimes it won't say any of those phrases, and you're going to have to know in context of the problem which one is depending on the other, okay? And we'll get some practice, like I said, with that. So let's start with the driving home problem to practice at least one time with this. So it says you drive home from the football game, and the number of kilometers you are away from home depends on the number of minutes you've been driving. Suppose that you are 11 kilometers from home when you've been driving for 10 minutes, and 8 kilometers from home when you've been driving for 15. So the reason why the distance is going down is because you're measuring your distance away from home. So, you know, you leave, check out this football. So you leave the football game and you head to your house. Well, you get in your car, right? You're driving home. This is the farthest away that you'll ever be, right? At time is zero. So at time is zero, you're the farthest distance. As you start driving in your car, like let's say you get to here at this point, you're at a stoplight. Maybe after, I don't know, five minutes of driving, now you're only this distance away. So it is getting smaller. So the distance here is getting smaller. But the, the output here, in this case, is going to be the number of kilometers, because it says very explicitly here, the number of kilometers you're away from home depends on the number of minutes. So you got to like look for phrases like that. Okay. So number of kilometers is my dependent variable, the output. And the independent variable is the number of minutes. Make sure you're writing number of minutes, number of kilometers, not just minutes, not just kilometers, because it's really quantity. So I'm going to take off points if I don't see number of in front of your units. Okay. Um, now the second part says to define your variables and write down the ordered pairs. 
just want to go over the definition. Ordered pair just means, you know, give me the x, y um, pairing. So there should be two in every problem, okay? Now, defining our variables, they, they just mention here not to use x and y all the time. Um, I sometimes do that like, in a problem. I'll just get in the habit of using x and y, but you do want to try to use different variables. Um, so, like, for example, in here we could say t for time. So t is equal to the number of minutes, and let's do distance for d as the number of kilometers. So um, the second part here for the ordered pairs, we're going to take this information that they say 11 kilometers away from home when you've been driving for 10 minutes. So sometimes people will put this in an ordered pair as 11 comma 10 because they read it going across. They say, oh, 11, 10. But you got to remember, this is supposed to be your output, right? This is representing a y. This is time, which represents an x. So you've got to be really careful about that. Make sure your ordered pair is in the right order. Because if it's not, then the equation of the line that you find is going to be incorrect. The second ordered pair is going to be 15, 8. Okay? All right, so that's just practice with independent and dependent. I would like you guys to do problems 1 and 2 on your own. Um, check with the key. It's really important that you can do this. Just practice it one, you know, for these two problems. These should be straightforward because I'm using specific phrases in these two, two questions here. Um, the only thing is on question two, be careful because the person's um, height should be expressed in inches. So you're going to have to convert here in inches. Okay, so this is something you want to check the key with. All right, so let's get into our first problem. This is our first model problem. So it says, um, this is our donut problem. The price you pay for a box of donuts varies linearly with the number of donuts in the box. So in other words, the more donuts you buy, the more money you pay. Okay, um, and the fact that it says varies linearly, uh, this is why this is kind of an easier problem because we're being very straightforward about it. The price is your dependent variable and the number of donuts is going to be your independent variable. How many donuts you get determines what the price that you pay is. So price depends on donuts. Okay, so let's do do D for donuts, number of donuts. And let's use P for price. Okay, so let's do um, X and Y. If you're really not sure how to do that, just do X and Y if that kind of helps you. Now, for the ordered pairs, this says five donuts are a price of 115. So five comma 1.15 is one ordered pair. And it also says 11 donuts, I pay $2.35. So those are my two ordered pairs. So in a word problem like this on a quiz, you're already going to get two points for being able to do this, setting up your variables and defining your ordered pairs. Okay. Now, this next part says write the particular equation expressing price in terms of number of donuts. This is another hint about what your dependent and your independent variables are, because you're going to always express, like for example, um, y in terms of x. This is what you're doing when you write a linear function, y equals 2x plus 5. So when they say express price in terms of this, that's really saying like here's your y, here's your x. So again, they're reiterating that for you um, without just telling you it though, they're trying to give you another hint for it. Now particular equation, it just means what is the specific linear equation? So not just some generic y equals mx plus b, but what is the particular equation, what, you know, what values here? So what we do, since we have two points, right, we do what we've been doing the past few days, and that's put this into point slope form. So what we're missing right now is our slope. Okay, so we're going to find the change in price over the change in the number of donuts that you buy. Okay, that would be like our change in y over the change in x, which is slope. So we take 1.15, stack 5 underneath it, so 1.15 over 5, and 2.35 over 11, subtract in between, and we get negative 6 on the bottom, and what is that on the top? Negative 120. All right, now, a negative over a negative, I've noticed some of you guys don't simplify this, make sure you do. Um, when I divide that out, I get 0.20, okay? We're going to talk about what this slope actually means later on in the problem, but this is my slope, 0.20, and now I'm going to put this into point slope form, so let's pick any point, let's do this top point here. So I have y minus 1.15 equaling 0.20 times x minus 5. 
So I'm going to put this in a function form, which means I have to distribute, and then get this number to the other side. So um, after I do that, I get 0.20x, uh, let's see, plus, it's going to be a dollar, plus 0.15, okay? All right, so this is my particular equation in function form. Again, it's called function form, also, also known as slope-intercept form. All right, now we're going to do some questions that relate to, you know, this function here, okay? And I think this is the easier part. This is where you have to realize that they're asking you, when it says to predict the price of a box containing three donuts, they're, all they're asking you to do here is let x equal 3, right? Or sorry, see I did it already. I changed the variables. That should be d and this should be price. Um, so then this should be donuts, d equals 3, the number of donuts. My bad. Um, you know what, I'm just going to use y and x because I know I'll do it again on accident. I'll mess it up. So anyhow, um, this is just telling you an input. They're saying let x equal 3 and just plug it right in here. So I'm using y equals 0 0.20 times 3 plus 0.15 and I get 60 cents plus 15 cents to get 75 cents. Make sure you don't write this as 0.75 cents because that's not even a whole penny if you write it like that. So it's either 75 cents or 0.75. Don't be that kid who writes it money wrong. Okay? <laughs> Alright, anyway. So that's three donuts cost 75 cents. Now, the next question says, if a box costs this, so in other words, they're telling you if price equals 315, or if the Y equals 315, how many donuts would you expect to contain? So they're giving you the Y, and they're asking you to solve for X. That's what they're telling you. So in the last problem, they gave you the X. So they said X equals 3 now solve for y. So you're always just going to be doing the opposite. So you just need to make sure you understand which variable is which. So here we're going to plug in into y equals 0.20x plus 0.15. We're going to plug in 315. And we get 3 equals 0.20x. So if we divide that we should end up with uh, 15 one fifth, yeah, 15 donuts. Okay. All right, so those are kind of the easier parts. Now comes the harder, trickier parts, I think, for, for students. And that's interpreting um, the parts of your function. So it asks you to tell the real-world meanings of the slope and the price intercept. So let's take a look at both of those things. So I'm going to write my function again, 0 0.20x um, plus 0.15. All right, now, 0 0.20. This slope, remember, was the change in our y over the change in the x. And it's kind of helpful now to use. Um, oops, not donuts. It's kind of helpful to use the actual terminology that was used in the problem. So it's change in price over the change in your donuts, like the number of donuts. So think about what that means. Well, this is the price per donut. That's why we get 0 0.20. Each donut costs us 20 cents. So it's just 20 cents for one donut. This should always be a unit rate where you have one donut or one, whatever the unit is should always be one in the denominator here. But that's what this means, that the slope, slope is 20 cents per donut. Okay, that's the real world meaning of your slope. Now the price intercept, instead of calling it the y intercept, they're calling it the price intercept. Remember, price is just the y variable. So this represents our price intercept. Now, this kind of gives students trouble as well. When we're talking about a price intercept here, this is um, the amount of, mo of money that you pay for like zero donuts, right? If I plugged in zero here, then my y-intercept would be 0.15. Sorry about that. Okay, so I think I was just talking about price intercept, and if you plug in zero and for this, that means zero donuts, right? So at zero donuts, I'm still paying 15 cents. Well, that kind of makes no sense, right? Because who goes to a donut shop, you know, gets zero donuts and still gives 15 cents? So this means something else, right? Sometimes people think that it means a tax. Well, when you think about taxes, taxes depend on, you know, the quantity, um, the overall price of something. 
It's not just a one-time flat fee. This is this is basically a one-time fee that you're paying. You pay first an upfront fee of 15 cents, then you pay 20 cents per donut that you buy. Okay, so this 15 cents means something different. In this case, I'm going to speculate. You know that the, the donut shop charges you for a, the box. They include that in the price because they don't want to be you know spending all this money for the box that you that your donuts are contained in. So I'm going to say that 15 cents is the price you pay for the box okay so it's not a tax because again a tax would um it's not just you know 15 cents and that's it you it's depending on how much total the price is and this is only a one-time cost so that wouldn't really make sense for tax um, so the slope just to reiterate is the change in your price over the change in donuts so when we talk about that that's you know a money amount per one donut so that's price 20 cents per donut so in every increase in donut you pay an additional 20 cents okay we're gonna actually do this part part E here in class so this is the end of this lesson please leave this blank because we're gonna go over this together in class nice job